Hello, business analytics superstars, and welcome to Chapter 10, Hypothesis Testing. Here, we delve into a topic that's central to the world of statistics and decision making, namely hypothesis testing. It's a method that helps us make informed judgments about claims or assertions regarding a population. Uh, whether you're a business analyst, a researcher, or just someone who loves uh, data-driven decision-making, hypothesis testing uh, gives you uh, the tools to validate or challenge those claims using evidence, all in the name of precision and accuracy. At its core, uh, hypothesis testing uh, is a systematic method of making decisions about a population uh, based on a sample of data. It provides a structured way uh, to test a claim or an assumption about a, a population parameter, uh, like the uh, population mean or perhaps a population proportion. This claim or hypothesis uh, could be something like, is uh, our new product uh, really better than uh, the competition? Uh, does this medication uh, reduce symptoms faster than a placebo? Or uh, are the weights of chocolate bars exactly what the label claims? The beauty of hypothesis testing is that it gives us a formal process for answering these questions. Uh, it's a little bit like a courtroom trial where uh, we evaluate evidence to either reject or fail to reject the initial assumption. You, know, you are innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, say. But in statistics, uh, there's no room for, for gut feelings. Everything is backed by evidence and data. Now, before we can even start gathering evidence, we first need to set up two competing hypotheses. The null hypothesis, H0, is the claim we initially assume to be true. Think of it as the default position or the status quo. For example, if a company claims its laptop battery lasts for 10 hours on average, the null hypothesis would be that the battery life is indeed 10 hours on average. The alternative hypothesis, H1, is what we're trying to prove. It's the, the claim we suspect might be true if the null hypothesis is false. For instance, if we suspect the battery life is not on average 10 hours, the alternative hypothesis could be uh, that the average battery life is either less than or greater than 10 hours, uh, depending on our expectations. Now, once we've framed these hypotheses, uh, the goal of hypothesis testing is to assess the evidence, i.e. the data, and decide whether we have enough statistical evidence to justify rejecting the null hypothesis in favour of the alternative. Now, there are two types of hypothesis tests, and they depend on the nature of the claim we're testing. In a one-tailed test, uh, this is used when we're only interested in deviations in one direction. For example, uh, we might only care if the battery life is less than 10 hours on average. In this case, we would perform a left-tailed test or lower-tailed test. However, if we're only testing whether the battery life is greater than 10 hours, again, on average, we'd perform a right-tailed test or an upper-tailed test. So these are called one-tailed tests because we're only considering deviations on one side of the distribution. Whereas a two-tailed test is when we're interested in deviations in both directions. Uh, maybe we want to check if the average battery life is different from 10 hours, uh, whether it's less or more. And in this case, we perform a two-tailed test, which allows us to catch significant deviations in either direction. Uh, choosing between a one-tailed and two-tailed test is important uh, because it subsequently impacts how we interpret the evidence and determine the extent of statistical significance. Now, here's where the magic of data comes in. Uh, to make decisions in hypothesis testing, uh, we use a measure called the p-value. A p-value is essentially uh, the probability of observing the data we've collected or something more extreme, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. Uh, in simpler terms, it helps us determine how unusual our data is under the assumption that the null hypothesis holds. A small p-value, typically less than 0.05, say, suggests that the observed data is quite unlikely if the null hypothesis is true. In such cases, we uh, have reason to reject the null hypothesis in favour of the alternative. 
However, a large p-value greater than 0 0.05 indicates that the data is consistent with the null hypothesis, and we do not have enough evidence to justify rejecting it. Now, this threshold of 0 0.05 is known as the significance level, and it's the standard cutoff in many fields. It means we're willing to accept a 5% chance of mistakenly rejecting the null hypothesis, a false positive, uh, if it's actually true. And in the real world, no decision-making process is perfect, of course, and hypothesis testing is no exception. Uh, there are two types of errors we can make. A type one error occurs when we reject the null hypothesis when it's actually true. Uh, it's a, a false positive and happens when we think we found evidence to support uh, the alternative hypothesis, but uh, it was just a, a fluke. The probability of making this error is called the significance level. At alpha uh, usually set at 0.05 or 5%. A type two error occurs when we fail to reject the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is true. In other words, we miss out on discovering a true effect. Now we could denote the probability of this error, let's say, by beta, and the power of the test, 1 minus beta, is the probability of correctly rejecting the null when it is false. Now, balancing these two types of errors is a key aspect of hypothesis testing. Uh, while we want to minimize both, um, increasing the sample size and improving data quality uh, can help reduce the likelihood of these errors. So now that we've covered uh, the basics, uh, let's talk about some practical uh, applications of hypothesis testing. Um, in quality control, uh, companies often use hypothesis testing to verify that their products meet certain standards. For example, um, a cereal company might test whether the average weight of a box of cereal is 500 grams as advertised. If their sample data show a significant deviation, then they might need to uh, adjust their production process. Uh, suppose a marketing team wants to test whether a new advertisement leads to higher sales uh, than the current one. Uh, they could frame uh, their null hypothesis as that the new ad has no effect on sales and the alternative as the uh, new ad increases sales. Now, by collecting sales data and performing an appropriate hypothesis test, they can then decide whether to invest further in the new advertising campaign. Uh, in clinical trials, hypothesis testing is used to determine whether a new drug is more effective than a placebo. Uh, the null hypothesis might be that the new drug has no effect, while the alternative hypothesis is that it improves patient outcomes. Uh, the p-value from the trial uh, then can help researchers decide whether the results are statistically significant, and hence whether uh, further development of the drug can be justified. Hence, in business, healthcare, and countless other fields, hypothesis testing is the key uh, to making uh, decisions that matter, backed by the data you can trust. So, superstars, are you ready? I hope it's statistically significant that you are.